Is that first yeah, time? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's where I was on Is anyone Friday, attending Saturday. via Zoom? <laughs> Not yet. No. So I will skip that etiquette reminder and <laughs> give them the same courtesies as everyone sitting in the room. Well, if we could stop there, yes, if you are you. going to attend via Zoom next time, you will need your name badge, name tag, and you're going to have to have your camera on. Yeah. So we know who you are. And uh, that's just the, the new for, rules. For board members so, or for committee members? For committee like, members. Sean, 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 members. Yes. It's the, what the law says, and I, I've had conversations with Gene just to clarify. Okay. So okay. the little name tag in the box suffices if you're participating by Zoom. The named cards are for if you're in the room and you're on a committee, just as a courtesy to help identify. I thought it was yeah, okay. That's, that's she exactly had, the law. Okay, I'm glad that. So, well, here's your name tag. Yeah. Sorry. There's a law for this. But if you are, you have to make law. sure that your yeah, name is. Yeah, so so now I have to get dressed. Have to get dressed law. Law. in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get more if, if you're gonna vote, so you're people. Oh, that could be ugly. It's green next time, Chuck. Okay. I <laughs> know. There's a reason for that. So you guys okay. don't lose your name tags, okay? That's the message. I will take can I, the name Can I just write something today. and tape it off? <laughs> Where are it for four weeks? Some string in. In Wegmans. Hi. Hi. Hi, man. So um, we'll get started. And uh, I'm going to. Pass over the Zoom etiquette reminder and privilege of the floor. I'm going to pass over for a moment. Um, so I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from June 5th. So and Kim, I would like to say thank you. You've made them much cleaner and simpler, and I appreciate that. It, I suck uh, it doesn't read quite like a book anymore. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Uh, so we have a couple of surprise guests yeah. here this morning. Many, let me say, many Actually, surprise right. guests this morning. Um, so I got uh, a contact from Greg, I think it was Thursday of last week, and uh, asking whether Mr. Brew could uh, attend this morning and give us a little presentation on his plans for uh, the German Brothers uh, Arena. And I had no objections to that. Uh, however, prior to us getting started, I want to just mention to you that this is unusual. However, I do think that it is relative to a topic that we are going to be talking about, which is incentive zoning. And uh, I ask that you be succinct, brief, and to the point, and be respectful of our committee members' time. And uh, I think you can do that for us. Do. <laughs> okay, good. And I would, before we get started with that, I would ask, is there anyone on the committee that is opposed to uh, hearing this or listening to this? Okay, so with that all being said, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I don't have a formal presentation, um, <clears throat> and uh, nor do I have a formal plan. Um, so I purchased the marina from the Germans about a year and a half ago, and uh, as any new owner, you start thinking about things you might want to do to the marina. Um, and uh, a lot of those things are based on what I've heard from uh, community members. Uh, just uh, so I hear parking is a, is a challenge. So I wanted to do see if I could address parking somehow. Um, <clears throat> not from for my customers but parking on the road and walkers and joggers and bicyclists uh, um, and uh, another thing that i hear a lot is um, there's no destinations on the lake i hear that a lot is when i get on my boat or uh, <clears throat> yeah. It, 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 there's nowhere to go there used to be places to go all the other lakes have places where i where you can go um, so I, I keep those in the back of my mind as I think about things that uh, we could do at the marina because I want to kind of make it work for as many people as possible. So the the the, the thoughts that I'm going to present here are 
um, in no particular order, and they're not, uh, I haven't made any uh, hard movements in those directions, so this, I'm still kind of just feeling out what's possible. Um, <clears throat> so one of the, uh, well, we are purchasing a slice of the property that the Germans own on uh, North Road, North Street, I forget which one. It is. 30. 30. 30. It's basically okay. North Road. <laughs> um, okay, North Road. <laughs> yeah. So the, the intention there is to uh, take the service operation that's currently at the marina and move that to that location. Um, that, that alone would uh, eliminate a bunch of the congestion that goes on there, that was all the boats that, boats that are waiting to be serviced or are waiting to be picked up after service, all that can be kind of taken away from that location. So <clears throat> that would certainly free up a lot of the congestion that goes on there. Um, so then uh, what do I do with that space? I'm sure you've uh, heard people talk about maybe we could put a restaurant of some sort there. Um, I have really not given that a ton of thought, but uh, a ton of research, I should say. Um, it certainly seems to make sense. Um, <clears throat> so then the next question is, where does everybody park if you're going to go to the restaurant, whether if they come by boat or if they come by <clears throat> car? Um, so moving, putting all of those pieces together, um, uh, another piece is, can we add, uh, we have 30 docks now that are all attached to the land. Um, could we put more docks in that would allow more boats to tie up? Um, I'm a little limited now due to my restrictive zoning that, that I'm in. Um, <clears throat> having more docks would allow for many things. Um, if we had a restaurant there, there'd be docks for people to, uh, the destination on the lake that people want. Um, <clears throat> it would also allow me to take some of the boats that are stored on the hill and they could go in the water. Those slop, uh, wet slips are more desirable than the dry slips. And then I would uh, devote the space on the hill to parking. So that would get cars off the road and that would have docks would have space for people coming in by boat to maybe use the restaurant. Um, it would also allow for um, the, uh, all the boats that are what we call dry store on the hill now, um, a concept that, I, again, these are all kind of moving parts that might work together, is if those boats were stored on County Route 30, it would a more dock space would allow me to do what I call appointment boating. Right now, somebody comes and says, I want to go on my boat. We go get their boat, we put it in. Um, that works fine. But I can't uh, I can't do appointment boating, which is I'm going to go out at 8 30. Can you have my boat ready for me at 8 30? Because I don't have any place to hold their boat for them. Because if they show up at 8 45 or 9 o'clock, I have no place to hold them. So <clears throat> If I kept the boats off site, more space for parking for you guys, uh, to, you know, not on the road parking, um, and then customers have appointment voting, um, which is obviously good for them. So um, it, the, the last piece is uh, we're limited in the amount of space we can devote to rentals, which is great for the out of town tourist uh, that that uh, comes into town comes rents a boat just yesterday everybody says where can I get a sandwich send them to the sandbar um, and all that generates economic activity which is obviously a good thing uh, for the town um, so I I started out saying that these are all ideas they all seem to work together I have not done uh, financial projections on what these cost and the payback period, but they certainly all seem to work well together. <clears throat> um, that um, is good for the marina and again gives people access to something to do when they're on the lake. Um, 
I've had a lot of people walk into the marina and say, can you please put a restaurant in here? Um, I've had people say that they would do it on their own time. They would organize a, a petition or whatever the right terminology is to go around and get signatures from people. Um, that, and these are people who live down the street um, that they want some uh, a, a local place to go to. Um, so uh, a destination on the lake, um, something for the community to attend and then addressing the, the parking issue. So those are kind of all my thoughts. And um, like I said, they all seem to work together well, but uh, I haven't uh, all the numbers on paper. <clears throat> the, the big one is the docks is, is a big domino that makes all that flow. And as Sean and some others know who was in the, we had a meeting, at, uh, um, um, I can't, Budge in my in my current zoning, I can't do anything there. So, so therefore, you would like to hear some things about what's going on here in the town from an incentive thought process, incentive zoning thought process. They haven't done anything yet, I, but an update for you would be good, right? I not familiar with that term really, so right, right, right. that would be good to to hear how that works. Going back to the basics, the zoning is RLD. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Marina's there uh, as a non conforming use? Correct? Yeah, since okay. the uh, beginning of time. Okay. It's been there forever. When does the zoning put in place? I just out of curiosity. Like, is that RLD zone? Probably 40 years ago, 50 years ago. No. In the 70s. There was a version of it in the 70s. Yeah, 70s. I thought it started in the well. seven, like 72. We also or... have the morning and docking bar. Yes. Good. That was added in the what, what is 90s the, uh, or what is the mooring and docking law say in terms of maximum slips or docks or whatever given their front is he's at the max he with back? his moorings and his docks. How many moorings do you have? Is that dictated no, by I'm the way it's town it, log or is that dictated by that's dictated by the uniform back in the morning law specifically? Yeah. That's the UDML is uh it was state legislation that was adopted that uh, allowed that that is all of the municipalities of canada Echo lake so yeah that's its own separate code mm -hmm. one can't right. go and change it yeah. we can't change that the codified set of codified was there a but can i just i thought that it said um it's up to the town's discretion in the set of zoning, it is. No, wait, wait, wait. No, what, not what nothing. He's with, talking about is the tier right. classification. Right. Yes. So the tier oh, classification, yeah. the town board right. can decide for which tier it is, but it's supposed to be relative to the adjoining yes. zoning. Yeah. And so the town board would have some discretion in terms of the tier based on the zoning. That's, that's the only discretion the town board has. There. And so that particular true. lot you're saying? So if yes. it was determined that it was not L RLD and was something else, then the number of docks might change? Yes, based, based on, on the that. Tier. The tier classification dictates the number of moorings and docks they right. have. But doesn't the state have some say in it? No. no, not the, the tier. tier. No, not I mean, the tier what goes in the lake. I mean, attached to the lake. Uh, in terms of OGS, in terms of attached to the bottom, yes. However, the tier classification that it is determined by the town board, the town board has 100% say in that, that would determine the maximum number of mornings and slips you could have. I remember when um, one of the older people on the board, so. <laughs> and in the town. In the town, I was going to say that. <laughs> I remember uh, years ago when. Uh, um, What's your name? I mean, it's Eni, I think it is that okay. they uh, had come in and uh, purchased the land from Ernie Jansen's estate where they got to build the houses up. They also knew. At that time, there was a, a big um, brouhaha over what's going to happen here. And at that time, there was a restaurant proposed, a clubhouse slash restaurant. Would be able, the restaurant would be able to sell it. But at that time, I remember, I thought Kevin was, uh, Olvani was talking about. The, the number of moorings and docking sites you had there and what the state would allow. And that number was much higher than what exists. And I don't think it's changed since in the past 15 or 18 years, but that the state would allow more than what was there. And that was what upset mm -hmm. people that it's going to expand dramatically. And that, 
My memory isn't dim. I remember that that, that happened, but you probably do too. Yeah, it's not too far off. Yeah. yeah. But I but I always support listening to the citizens from a uh, perspective of use models change every day. Right? Well, yeah. You know, and and today, you know, there's a demand. I don't know if you guys have videotaped. I think John has. I know I have the uh, not videotape, but phone tape. The uh, North Shore over the last few weekends, it's packed. It's 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 unbelievable, right? And to uh, work with a, a a corporation that will be addressing those issues. And for me, by far, the biggest thing is the left the 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 risk we all have to our families and our friends as a result of the way it was with the parking on, on West Lake Road, with the boats, people going in and out as they're going in, tucking behind the toe of the, of the trailer just to let the cars go by and then go back out again. And it's, it's just changed so much that that density and that's getting that traffic, getting those boats and cars off of West Lake Road is a huge deal. And you go talk to Dick McGavin about it. Dick wants those you know, he's, got, he's really worked up about it. And I support his view, which is times are changing and the market is changing and the rental market has changed. It's 25 years ago, 30 years ago, they never nobody really rented a boat ever, right? So it's trying to get things as current as we can in, in the most uh, reasonable way to, to, you know, have the community feel the effect of what we're trying to do here to get that traffic Get the cars and the trailers and the boats off of West Lake Road. That is a dangerous situation. I was driving Amen. down there yesterday afternoon, and some young guy was coming from the west side to the east, staring at his phone, right. headphones on. And so I slowed down, and he got into the northbound lane where I was and stopped. I stopped about four feet from him, you know, he was just standing there looking at the phone. Finally, he looked up and saw me. I did this. He went back to me, but he didn't use his whole hand. Right. So he was part of it. But, you know, not one of my guys. I don't think it was a no, no. no. It was, a, it was a, a patron. Okay. I think you should throw him out. <laughs> <laughs> Take away his rights. <laughs> well, Greg, I concur with you that you know we had a meeting. Um, I want to say it was two or three years ago now that the town had down at Onanda. And it was talking about improvements to Westlake Road and areas. And <clears throat> I concur that that is a dangerous section of road. I mean, you know, you all know I live. It's right a question there. of time. It's just a question of time. Somebody's going to get hurt there. Uh, I think Westlake Road is extremely dangerous as it currently exists. And if we could do something to improve that situation, I'm <clears throat> sure we're all anxious to do that. So, you know, I guess the feedback I would give to you. Mr. Brew is, you know, come with more of a uh, concrete plan that illustrates what you want to do and give us something to think about as far as the incentive zoning goes. We really haven't dug into that yet at the ordinance committee, uh, but we are, as you can see by our agenda, uh, looking to do that. I think today we we're going to kind of focus on the agricultural overlay, but uh, the incentive zoning is hot. Uh, our list that we are going to be addressing that imminently. Can you take a moment and quickly explain that, what that is? I can't really <laughs> tell you, but I think in, in essence, principle, in, in in principle, principle right. Doug, you jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. I think it would be uh, a concession to uh, give some leniency to the existing zoning in return for something well at the town board's discretion at the, the town, town board's board discretion that yes decision. yes yeah so but, there, but in there essence be, that's yes. kind of this in essence what we're talking about right? it's kind of a we will be lenient that the town board has the right to be lenient right. relative to the existing zoning that you are situated in provided that there is some benefit in return to the community and that could be any number. Could be of any number of things. Right. So mutually beneficial. Yes. But if I was Mr. Brew, I wouldn't spend a dollar on plans. Yes. Because it would be a waste for him to bring in plans currently because he can't do anything. Right. With the RLD. Right. Unless the Unless ordinance committee advances this in the town board. Right. Takes it. Yes. 
I agree. Thank you. Mr. Brew, I would love in the future when you come back with us again, I would love to hear uh, if you have more information about how your lakeside neighbors would feel about this going forward and how the Watershed Alliance would feel about any impact it might have. That would be important for me to learn as well. So, okay. We probably should. You probably don't know everybody in the room, do you? I or do you a few. Some of us have name tags. <laughs> <Maybe we're laughs> <just, laughs> name tags. Maybe we got name tags. I know he's old. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Introduce ourselves and uh, just tell you who we are and what we do. Karen, do you want to start? I'm Karen Delay. I'm a town board member just sitting in on the meeting. <laughs> Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Uh, Kim Burkhart. I take minutes and help out with the online meeting. You're also on the ACV. Oh, as a member. That, that is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't use the acronym. What's the environmental, hey, environmental conservation, 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 conservation board? Sorry. Board. Not a morale employee. Uh, environmental conservation board. Okay. I'm Shauna. We've met multiple yes. times. I'm Adeline Rudolph. I'm on the town board, a member of this committee, and I facilitate the ACV, the Jerry environmental Benley. conservation board. <laughs> Jerry Benley. I'm deputy town supervisor. In my fourth term, and on, on the town board right now. I also I'm a member of the committee here and the chair of the public work committee. John Casey, I'm a neighbor of yours. I want to go back for last year. I you and that really cool pontoon boat. I do have that. Well, yeah, I think it's pretty cool too. So yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Terry. Terry, you're also talking a little bit about the LDC. Hmm. Oh yeah, president of the LDC this year. Local development local corporation. Local development corporation. It's a Consortium really of the, the city, the town, and the Chamber of Commerce. The city of Canandaigua, the town of Canandaigua, the Chamber of Commerce, looking at ways and means and methods that we can advance the economic activity in the town, and, you know, increase everybody's uh, prosperity. Raise the tide for all the boats. What's that? Rising tide raises all the boats, yeah. right? Yeah. It sure do. And I'm going to piggyback on Terry's comments about the LDC and kind of tie it into what you said earlier, Greg, because personally, I think that one of the major strategic conversations that the LDC should be having is uh, infrastructure and the logistics of the north end of the lake and your property and the West Lake Road are two critical components, I think, to economic development here in our community. Uh, I think quality of life fits into that conversation as well, because uh, I do drive um, the north end of the lake and West Lake Road every day, just about, and I see a tremendous influx of people. Um, years ago, and I've been a resident here now for in excess of 30 years, and years ago, Canada was an unknown community in the world. People didn't know about Canada. And there was an article this weekend in the paper that talked about how people are staying local. And Canada is reaping the benefits of that. And I don't think it's going to stop because I think once people get here and they see how beautiful this place is, it's going to do nothing but inspire more people to come here and be here and enjoy what we all have. And I think we need to get out in front of it. And I think right now we're behind it. And, um, you know, there was a meeting supposedly Saturday that the city had to discuss some of this, these issues. Uh, I couldn't find it until I was back in my car and starting to leave. And then I realized it was in the pavilion. And I saw there was only three or four people there. And I hope that uh, what was discussed there comes out. And I hope it comes out at the LDC. I'm disappointed that. Uh, some of the people that I think should be at the LDC don't participate, or they only participate from Zoom, and they're half there half the time. Uh, and uh, I find that a little bit discouraging. But, um, anyways, my name is John Casey. I have a cool <laughs> name, and I am a neighbor of yours, and uh, I'm glad you're here. I, I'm chair of this committee, I'm a candidate for the town board, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to be involved just as a uh, concerned member of the community and uh, I want to do my part and I do it as a charity. You might have forgotten everybody else's name so I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Jared Simpson, town supervisor. I'm Schwartz. I'm been on a number of committees and boards and doesn't have this 
been a resident since the town was unknown to <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the neighbor Keith Germans lived here forever. You can't be a founding father. I do have a question for you, and I think Greg, you brought it up at one time. Who could make the Westlake Road one way? Uh, we yeah. talked about that oh, at one wow. time as well, a solution. That has to be a community decision. No. <laughs> Not a town or in town. Because we, yeah. we are right. constrained by so many things, whether it's mooring and back on lot, whether it's zoning, and I can think of town boards four or five generations back where they didn't want any commercial development and the RLD or on the lake and whining about congestion and we talk about neighbors. Uh, we saw a lot of neighbor reaction when the town wanted to buy Kellogg's property. So, you know, you really have to take the temperature of the community yeah. when you're talking about which is Kellogg's property. In, it's Artistic Artistic point. Point. Uh, mm -hmm. Park yeah. Boys. There was a lot of feedback, mm -hmm. both pro and con. And it's, you Statistically, the vice versa. It's hard hard to sort out. The you know the loudest voices are they right or wrong? Mm -hmm. So the, you know there's no easy answer. Mm -hmm. But welcome. Good okay. luck. But but I'm I'm going to refer all of us back to the comprehensive plan. That should be driving our desires. Yes. Right? However, Greg, relative to the comprehensive plan, it has to be my own two cents. Okay, that was done pre-pandemic, and times have changed. And I think that times have changed very dramatically since that conference has, has been developed. And we had a joint meeting of all of the boards right. uh, a couple weeks, of weeks ago. Right. And you know, one of the comments I had coming out of that meeting was that I think we need to have some more strategic conversations and discussions because in the last two or three years, the world has changed very right. dramatically. And that comprehensive plan may or may not be relevant to today. Yeah, I just identified only in the context of lake access. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Set all that other stuff aside. Lake access has been the dominant request from the community through the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Fact. And until it's the lake access is next to you. That's the well, problem. That's yeah. that's called life. Yeah. Okay. That's called life. So, a lot of reactions. Um, um, uh, you're the last one, Dave. So oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I may be uh, <laughs> precluded here, but next thing I know, it'll be 10 o'clock. I never introduce myself. <laughs> so I'm Chuck Oiler. I'm the uh, chairman of the planning board, and I also sit in this committee and the planning public works committee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Pretty well rounded group. Yeah. On the lake access, um, I hear that term. It's a mm -hmm. uh, fairly broad term. Can I get some? So, if is there a way for me to work my thoughts into the lake access thing somehow? Because I have lake access. What what's the town looking for when when you say lake access? More, more people who don't live on the lake want to have the ability to oh, have some sort public, of public, interaction public, with public. the lake. So, yeah. Touching the water. Yeah. So is interaction uh, sitting there eating an ice cream cone, or okay. is it? Yeah. Um, Swimming, uh, diving, and eating swimming, swimming, fishing, diving, boating, all of the above. Everything. Everything. Putting your boat in. I mean, your definite positive is that you obviously are already a marina and a destination for boater access. So that's already there. So that's a that's a definite plus. People are already used to boats coming in and out of there on a consistent basis and people coming in and out of there as a business. It's pretty unusual for the RLT. <laughs> so... I was recently reading our Parks and Rec Master Plan and it pulled a snippet from the town plan and actually took it a step further and it says the town should explore all opportunities for lake access. It's very broad and general and intentional so that it's whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. So you just used an interesting word with just launching. Mm -hmm. So obviously I have a ramp there. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't really thought about right now, it's not a public launch. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for me to accommodate that? Um, but there's challenges that go with that, yeah. right? What do you do with the trucks and the trailers and whatnot? Um, but again, I'm, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. take your, well, someone said give to get, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
what what do you guys need and want and what do i what would i like and how do i come up with something that works for everybody so that's what i'm trying to hear what lake defined lake access is is there a way for me to i personally open to a lot of conversations as long as they are maintaining the environmental stability of the lake i mean that's that's number one for me. I mean, we all want to be on the lake. The reason we want to be on it because it's clean and beautiful <laughs> and fresh. So that's that's my number one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of options we could do there from restaurants to kayak launching to boats in the lake. I mean, a lot of different things would be interested in hearing what, what works for you. So but. and so the on a, on a Linda Park there, doesn't that give lots of access? Oh, Nanda, oh Nanda, do you mean? Nanda, Nanda, sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely like the jewel no of our lake access. Only, only, yeah. The only boat I know that is when the north end of the lake is frozen. Oh, boat wise. Thing. There's yeah. there's a requirement with our agreement with the DEC that when the north end of the lake is frozen, the state Canandaigua Lake State okay. Park is frozen, yeah. they can't launch there. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's open for boat launching oh, so there. But that's the time. Yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's not a place where people are driving their boats in yeah. or even kayaks, right? No, no, no. That's my question. Can you kayak? You, you can kayak. Can launch you, know, okay. you just can't have an engine. Have a motor on the motor because of the swim area. The motor yeah. you can't have a motor next to the swim area. That's a DOH yeah. thing. So department out. Oh. So that's fishing, swimming, not necessarily boat launching, but, right? But it's mainly fishing, swimming, just hiking, water. So and Frozen. just picnicking. What is your lake frontage? Just under 600. 600. Okay. I could just take a minute to. I think the only time we've used incentive zoning is for the uh, villas uh, complex. It's off Middle Cheshire Road. And Cheshire Island, the villas. Right. That was um, people who wanted to develop that. The town board decided to use incentive zoning. And incentive zoning. The developer got certain incentives in return. The town got certain amenities. And I would, I, I was, on the, I chaired the amenities committee, if you will, and it was a trade-off. There is a marshy, swampy chunk of land about thirty or forty acres at Middle Cheshire Road, former Albright property, that the developer purchased that, gave it to the town. Switchback Trail that's on the side of the. Uh, south side of uh, bypass going down to the city. Uh, that trail was constructed by the developer. We added a turning lane in Middle Cheshire Road. We extended the uh, sewer line down past the churches on Middle Cheshire Road. There, there's a whole list. There are about 10 different amenities that were granted by the developer and in return for the incentive of being able to do, develop that village complex because that was the, the zoning didn't allow single family that. at the time, right? So mm -hmm. the town board adapted that, allowed it to be used there. But incentive zoning is only allowed in certain zoning districts, not across the board. And that's one of the questions is do you allow it across the board, which I can't see why not really, but um, is it allowed in the RLD? Because I know that's that would have to be a change. It's not at this point. Not, not allowed, really, no. But why is it allowed in some districts and not in others? That's a question. The right application. The right yeah. application to the town board. So the first thing would have to happen is the town board would have to vote. So we'd have to have a presentation encouraging us and justifying why we want to encourage incentive zoning in the RLD. And then that would be a vote that we would have to take to change code to allow that in the RLD. Um, so that would be really be the first step because if that comes with a public this, hearing, right? Yeah, it's a, deep, it's, it's a longer process. It's yep. multiple months. So I would, that would be the first step because without that, nothing would really happen. So without, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you really can't, there's no sense making a plan if that doesn't happen. So that would be the very first thing. That so would it's a concept plan approval. Yeah. Now, and that wouldn't be, you know, spending thousands on, you know, that would, wouldn't be spending thousands on a full plan. That would be here's the outline of what I'm hoping to do. I would also encourage you, uh, Chapter 96, the town code talks about the docking and mooring laws. Yes. And there are a lot of restrictions put in there, you know, and it talks about the environmental and all the other considerations that have to be taken into account. 
and it also has your different tiers uh, of, of docking. Uh, so you can take a look at that and familiarize yourself with those that I um, and, with it. and what is allowed, you know, because if you have, you know, eight, if you have six, would you say 600? It's feet? just, uh, just under 600. Okay. And actually that was one of my early questions because they're in chunks of a hundred. Is it prorated at that point? So like, so I think it's, I think I have 593. So does that mean if you have 600 or 500 or Point or do I have 5.9? Yeah. Or do I have 500 in the last 100 and you just, you don't have enough? Right. I would have said something you're probably going to get actually. Yeah. We would actually have to look at because, 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 because we also have to determine the timelines to yeah. figure yeah. out the exact yeah. line. So there's more to it. Than there's a lot. Okay. It could be. And I'm going to come at this a little differently. Okay, because I think I've, won. No, I think no, I've just heard a couple of people one. say, I yeah. wouldn't do this until you, this happens, right? And I was in the construction industry business for my entire life. Like, and I would <coughs> approach it a little differently. And I would say to you, I start formulating a plan ASAP because as you just heard, the process takes a while. And if you wait, hurry up and wait, you'll be hurry up and waiting for a while. So I start formulating that plan. I think you've heard that people in this room and people in the community uh, that are in close proximity to your um, facility want enhanced safety. So if you can do something to make that area safer and keeping in mind the other concerns you've had, like the quality of the lake and the, you know, those types of things. If you can create a safer environment while maintaining or enhancing what we currently have as far as ecological protection and the amenities and so on and so forth, you're gonna be one step ahead of the game. And it's my advice. Tom or Chuck may be able to speak to this better, but I would encourage you to engage with your neighbors earlier rather than later yes. so that you can create partnerships and understandings rather than surprises and you know, fear. Next so. question, and that is, uh, Terry, can I that is the only way. I've done this twice to you now, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> could you define neighbors? Like, is that like neighbors is, I think you're the ones that are going to probably be the most vocal would be your lake shore neighbors. Okay. It would be my, I, I don't know. You guys have a lot more experience with that than I would. But it's 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 yeah. I would run it with their issues from, uh, from rifles to Honolulu. Yeah. Okay. That's, that would define your close neighborhood. Right? Yeah. The, the ones who would be most likely to be concerned about views being changed by docking and, and uh, the quality of the lake and how their engagement with the lake is affected by your plans. So that's, I think, I, I mean, I think that's where you, you'll run into the most vocal issues is from, from neighbors that are gonna be most, most directly affected. And um, if they can find positives from it, that's gonna help all of us, you know, in, being able to support what you're doing if that's where we get to. Terry, the original RSM proposal included using the German brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Marina. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know what the issue was. I know there was a lot of pushback on it. Uh, was it because of the commercial aspects of yeah. it or perpetuation? Commercial aspect. Well, their plan had a uh, deck extending out over the lake. Mm -hmm. okay. And they were, at one point, they were going to restrict the uh, use of the marina to people that bought houses on the yeah. upland portion. So that was going to take a fueling point uh, so be totally off yeah. the lake. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing was more boats on the lake mm -hmm. yeah. because they were talking about, this is where I go back to this, the limit was stated to be up here and they're only using this. So their intention was to add those other mooring sites. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that really upset people that there would be more boat traffic or and well there's more boat traffic in that lake and there's more than in now than there ever was back then and i think so, the concept of keyhole development was scary yeah, people was, they didn't want somebody to have you know yeah. 200 feet of lake frontage and build 75 homes that you know get to use that little bit of lake so at that point in time peter there was also a more <clears throat> anti-development my opinion um Frame of mind in the town, and a lot of that is going now because 
It's happened. It's grown so much as 20 years ago. You know, the population has grown tremendously since then. There's people who have moved in that didn't have any preconceived uh, old time. Let's keep it small. Uh, frame of mind. I'm trying to remember what I was going to say before. <laughs> <laughs> it was good too. <laughs> oh, oh no, I, I know that. As far as the ordinance committee taking up the question of incentive zoning in other districts, not just the RLD, I wouldn't frame it as just the RLD it's across the whole town. There's, it's making an application that way to get it on the agenda. The ordinance committee can take up whatever. We've got a whole list here of, of, of items. The ordinance committee can take it up without a uh, an application yeah, would just say, hey, we've noticed this and we want to fix it. Well, that's on the agenda. Oh, I know that, yeah. but earlier it was, well, make the application. And it, I don't know. No. That. I mean, I wouldn't hold off. You know, the chance that, you know, it's imminent. Example. I mean, we're, we're going to be talking about it. It's imminent. Uh, just so everybody's aware that instead of zoning is not permitted currently in the AR1, AR2, SCR1, or RR3. Which may affect other areas of the town where we may have something going on, right? So that's where the ordinance committee yeah. might need to. But um, again, it's a town board decision absolutely. whether to allow it or not. So why restrict? There are more districts that don't allow it than do presently. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. Yeah. From my understanding, I did a little bit of research and was talking to a couple of people involved at the time with the villas. It's my understanding that the zoning was actually changed because it was AR2, which is non permitted to be able to use instead of zoning. So the town board rezoned it from AR2 to R130 so that they could rezone it to incentive zone. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. It was a multi-step problem. Mm -hmm. So on the safety topic, um, I uh, haven't been in this community very long. What's the history of safety in that corridor there? Do we know what? Your corridor specific or Wesley Road in general? Well, I guess both. Like at the I marina. Can speak from a personal perspective. I, personal personal. Uh, I go back to 7 11 13 and uh, 6 30 in the evening. And it's really mm -hmm. here. Oh, yeah. really? It's uh, and I think you know, Terry mentioned it. I mean, with the uh, advent of cellular telephones and texting and people talking, I mean, you just see it everywhere, and I'm particularly sensitive to it, right? I mean, it doesn't matter whether people are walking. Or whether people are riding bicycles or whether they're riding motorcycles or driving cars it's texting and talking and not paying attention Distraction. to driving and uh you know your section of that road right there i mean i hear it all the time you heard it here today people are concerned about that german brothers marina and that area and people parking along the road like i think you said it Greg, it's just a matter of time Somebody's what what has been the history, though? Has there been in it right there at right, German German Brothers? Brothers. Yeah, I don't think no, it hasn't happened, happened yet. There's been bumps and scrapes, right. cars versus trailers, that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, mostly yeah. local traffic, and we all know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but if you have yeah, somebody out of the, the issues that I hear, the people who reach out to me, it's it is it's the trailers coming in and out, and then you add that on top of the mowers. In season, people who are mowing lawns, not at your place, but down oh, that area, who park the trailers right. and they put their cones out and they're there. And then you throw one now every 30 seconds, an Amazon truck is stopping on the side of the road. <laughs> so it just kind of builds, you know. So mm -hmm. it is a very congested area. The road's narrow, it wasn't made for the kind of traffic it's getting. It was a little pathway road, you know, years ago, back when Terry was driving that. <laughs> Right. Um, they had in the middle rows, but right. they didn't have them. So, dirt, dirt, dirt. you know, that's, you know, it's narrow. There's not a whole ton of room. There's not a, you know, you don't have a lot of leeway. If something happens. And the so, telephone poles are like this far yeah, from yeah, the side yeah, of the yeah. road. So, and it's a county road too. So. Right. So it's a county road, which makes it so we can't. I mean, the county just invested a lot of money micro paving part of it mm -hmm. and you know kind of freshening it up a little bit the town didn't spend that money no the county mm -hmm. that's what yeah. i said oh, yeah. so structurally why didn't they move the telephone poles for the <laughs> see if it has that way that's right of way room. it's all because you have those mm -hmm. homes that go right right of way expense you know you have all of that jammed right into there so if you were to come back 
And I'm not saying you have to go down the what say go down the road and say you're gonna bury all the utilities and put in new sewer and everything else and widen the road. Don't do that. But what I would say is come back and propose, like everybody said, safety. Yep. And oh if you God. can tie it, because the minute you come back and even if you're allowed and say this is what I would like to do to the dockings in that area, public, you know, you're gonna there's gonna be a lot of pushback in the community. So tie it with safety, tie it with the area feel, you know, doing this will protect public safety and make it more environmentally safe. You want to have cars idling there, trucks, whatever. That would be another suggestion to, you know, when it, it when publicly, as far as here's what I'm doing, but here's the benefit to the community. Safety, That's environmentally, right. and amenities, which if you were to throw those in there. Going back to Terry's comment, when RSM was talking about their docks, was not that concurrent or whatever that Kevin Albany did a study on density? You're giving me a blank look, both of you. Guys. No, the, the it, Watershed it, Council did a stuff on the voting. Yeah, the so they, the on the they yeah. as I recall, drew a conclusion that it was already too, the lake was supposedly already too congested. And no question it is at the north end, but they drew. Yeah. They drew a conclusion that was already too congested. I'm going back to public feedback. And then, then they should just by the cyan, cyanovirus or whatever it is, the green algae, green algae. people are going to be psycho about any more mm -hmm. congestion on the lake, perceived or real. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's a hard thing to fight. You were looking at boats per acre yeah. of surface. Yeah. We all know that the northern end of the lake is where you add up those it's number of boats. Yeah. And the boats that are on like the southern 14 miles of the lake and divide by the, that surface area, that north end skews up numbers quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, drive down, I drove by Kershaw yesterday. And those boats are just parked next to each other out there, just lined up. They launched the boat at the red jacket, go around the corner, park for the day. Well, and they're there. I understand if it is, but they're, they're there because of the depth of the water. Oh yeah, know? it's a but, safe place for people to, to be in the water because they can stand there. And yeah. it's a little different at where you are. It's a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. than, you know. It's a lot nicer when you could go to Kershaw and swim anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was one heck of a lot of pushback. Sorry, that project. Oh yeah. yeah it was nasty. It was nasty. Mm -hmm. But it was a different time, also. Right. That's, I think. I don't know that it would be exactly the same now. To be pushed back at school because some people are emphasizing the safety that Jared was talking about. Safety trumps all. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's the trade off. Safety trumps all trade offs. I mean, you're, you're, there's no perfect anywhere, you know. So you're, if you could eliminate that area there, I think most people would be really thankful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're an existing situation. It's already an existing known entity for, for boating. I and mean, that's going to help you too. So, but I, that's why I'm consistently again and again indicating, you know, engage with those neighbors, engage with the Watershed Alliance, um, get some people on board for how you can help the system. It looks, sounds like you're looking to really improve and make a really nice site that improves the town. Those are the things that we're looking for. So. And you could, I would even reach out to Kevin O'Banny and talk to him about it. I'm on the watershed council for the town, and we have representatives from all the municipalities on the lake that meet. Um, that wouldn't be a bad place to have a discussion either. And um, I have and get feedback. I have talked with him briefly, but yeah. I think moving the service to mm -hmm. Canada 30 would also be a big help too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that about it. It's yeah. two big gifts. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be less conflicts yeah. with tractors and mm -hmm. right, trailers. And I mean, potentially um, chemicals and close to the lake right. area, too. So. Well, that was a big thing. The meeting was held uh, two or three months ago. It was a Friday afternoon. I remember I sat in that room. Kevin hosted it. It was a bunch of different area experts you know, on lake quality and all. They're talking more about the contaminants in the lake, not an invasive species. Boating never really came up in that discussion at all that day. I was surprised. They 
And the, 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 we all know where that comes from, right? It comes from the agricultural districts. Right. They, they are a contributor, and that's the only contributor. Oh, right, right, yeah. far. right, right. There's right, many contributors, right. but boat gasoline has never appeared on anything related to the, any of that activity. Their most recent uh, health of the lake and going forward, the 9E plan, they call it, the element, the nine elements that they were looking at would involve most living invasive species and runoff, you know, from different sources. You know. There's also a difference between what Jared talked about, the Candela Lake, what is it, Ocupiana Water Watershed Council, 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 right? Then there's a water shed alliance, association, yeah. whether it's an alliance association, whatever the words are. And those are the people, those are the people. Those are not representatives to the people. Those are the people, it's a wide open board. It's a, a Lynn, I can't remember the last name right now, is the president of that. I'll make the introduction for you to that one. Because the people are active in government, mm -hmm. right? And we, you, you, we need, you need to show them a plan that, you know, and I think you get two big ones to, to even start the conversation. Mm -hmm. right? You really do. And uh, I would be using both of them. Thank you for hearing me, listening. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Thanks for investing in the town of Canandaigua. Well, I, I'll admit that the, some other meetings that I've had, I left with uh, um, NFW was kind of the more, <laughs> more questions. Yeah. No, I, I left with a hard no. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but you guys have uh, helped me at least, you know, internalize it as well. Right? Yeah, and uh, given me, um, you know, up maybe a path forward. So we're good at CPR. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So good Thanks, at Peter. Meetings, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Nice meeting. Thanks, guys. Nice meeting. Take care. I'll see you. All right. I think we can get through all of our future topics now. Well, <laughs> it's a little longer than I was expecting, but uh, I think it sounds like it was a productive meeting. For I'm glad it was to say. Yeah. 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 Whenever, when the county did a study of the Westlake Road and essentially determined they came to a hell of a lot because of the planes and so on, was there any recommendation about German Brothers specifically? There, there was actually. There's, there's specific action steps mm -hmm. on the implementation that the county could take up if the county chose to. There's also, you know, it was clear in the study and we've researched it since then and the town board does have the authority to restrict parking on county road 16 if it so chose to do so mm -hmm. and so even though it's a county road and so uh, that was another one of the outcomes of that specifically in the area where german brothers is and so maybe that can be part of the future conversation i just envision an awful lot of pushback from Neighbors. That's why I'm like. I don't think so, Tom. I think you're going to see more people be. Um, Did you read the letters? Hand me the one for God's sake. Well, yeah, but I think that was a different but situation. Was, town perk was money spending town, town, yeah. 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 Expanding yeah. town. Money I think was, money was yeah. expanding town money for that, and you had the crew that's like, I don't want to park there. So you had both of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Where and it was this, a huge difference. There's a huge in difference from what where this said, one yeah. is. They're already there. Yeah. They're already existing. They've been there forever. It would be improving that area. So you're not taking some place that had no public access before and now suddenly giving them public mm -hmm. access. You're taking a place that has mm -hmm. public access and modifying it. Well, and his it's something point. important that yeah, he, he's going to be able to argue the benefit. Think of what's happened with Bristol Harbor, you know, and just all the many places that we felt like were public. For Canandaigua that weren't like Madera and Bristol Harbor that are just kind of gone now. And he's, you know, potentially, I mean, if there's a way that we can somehow ensure that there's continued public access from that location, that would be something I'd be interested That's the thing, yeah. it's incentive for amenities. Exactly. Yeah. That amenity was something you would Exactly. That's up to what to decide. Mm -hmm. yeah. He can say, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. can ask for the, the board could ask for everything. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> No, you know, I mean, good. I mean, that's and that's part of the this negotiation that's mm -hmm. going back and forth with the 
and just touch a minute on Tinchman's point. I think that, you know, I was part of an email chain that kept going around and I don't know if others might have been too, but the feedback I got was that it was the money that the town was going to spend and the fact that we were putting a park right in the middle of kind of an existing neighborhood. Very big change in use. Yeah, yeah. very big change. I'm not to say there won't be any on this. I'm sure there will, there will be. You'll have the people who. Oh, yeah. I, I, again, I looked at a lot of those letters and they, you asked me what an indie was. I hope you know now. Um, <laughs> and these were people that would, could certainly afford the tax increase that had been under assessed for decades. Uh, making sure that somebody else doesn't have access to work. I think there were a lot of selfish people about personally yeah. that could certainly afford to be more neighborly. Well, and I but, think that's why, you know, I think he's really going to have a real, a real asset and already have any existing use that he's trying to improve. I think everybody that's going to help him a lot. Everybody would love to have a restaurant. Oh, like, yeah. that, that's oh. nuts that we don't. Mm -hmm. I see you wanting to go to maybe the sawmill. Sort of analogous to the young club, really. I mean, yeah. it'd be an operations yeah. over to the young club. Yeah. 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 Um, um, maybe we got to watch the scenic you should. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an issue, but uh, if he can well, again, provide the amenities. Zoning, you can waive all that stuff. So. Incentive zoning gives you gives the town board a lot of power, a lot of authority. That's <laughs> what happened, you know, as I said earlier. Yep, the okay. Colors were rezoned R130, and, or I mean, to what was it? Was AR2? R130. R130, and then the incentive zoning. Incentive zoning is a class in itself, not a yeah, <clears throat> I don't see it's a way of all national resource. Uh, issues. And I don't think that can't, that's you can't that would right. And I don't think that, yeah, with that, but I mean, okay. Well, the because board having the decision that, that yeah, I mean, I, that could, but I don't see it being on. Well, board. I think essentially in granting the incentive zoning, you would take into consideration the aesthetic. In the yeah. aesthetic yeah. And so you're essentially covering it. Yeah, I'm talking more about setbacks and the, you know the the bulk area stuff and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, those things and putting a restaurant there. I mean, already up the hill, you're going to have sixty what two houses. And, you know, I mean that's that's going to make so a bigger a mark on the land. Than, yeah, yeah. Shame you can't tie it to ours. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even talk about that. The town board, though, it does give the town board. The town board actually passes a law, so similar to the MUO, right? Where the town board can dictate everything, dictate the setback, the color if they wanted of the building, to you name it. They can do Trump everything, everything, everything height, yes, setbacks. Yes. And that's where this larger conversation about where we allow incentive zoning is so important because right. it gives a lot of power to the town board, which. I haven't always been happy with the makeup of <laughs> I'm sure many people aren't always happy with the makeup of it. Flux, right? it changes so, all exactly. Time. So, Terry, you said there was an actual committee that came up with the uh, attributes that the town was looking for? Because that would be a consideration. You make sure you get mm -hmm. everything you want. Oh, yeah. In that yeah. ring of the zone. So, so myself, or I'm Brad, uh, I think Dennis was involved with it. Uh, somebody yeah. else from the planning board. and uh, Okay. Gene Christman was there. Good. You know, so they need something. There were, there were like half a dozen, half a dozen of us or mm -hmm. so at our side. None of us, you know, the developer, EME, and the other stuff. Mm -hmm. When you were the planning board chair and you were going through the consent and so on, <laughs> the town board back then would give you a lot of heat. Wasn't that when the RLD zoning district was changed to disallow any commercial? I believe that town board revised the zoning because they didn't want any commercial and it had to do with rentals. <clears throat> uh, do you remember that? Well, I remember I, that I, whole discussion. I, I online, I mentioned some names, but. They you know, wanted to restrict remember if that rentals, and I think at that time they changed. They who were at the, the town board was allowable uses an RLD. They said no more commercial. 
So the dates are all listed at the end of each section of the uh, code. It was changed in 2013. Doug, have we had any draft language on the yeah. we, we have seen that? Yes, I emailed it to you guys on June the 6th. On June 6th. Would you mind reading? I can send it out. I guess I'll send it out. Are you going to do it, Doug? Yeah. I have it. I got it. And, um, Let's just wrap up here quickly. Uh, I think, you know, yeah, good. I apologize that this was not on the agenda because I got the late call Thursday, but I think it was beneficial. I hope it was beneficial. I uh, would also start a conversation on the Senate zone, which is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, do we have to wrap up now? I'm just, I ask because Sarah and the Ag Committee were really looking for some insight we on don't. the Ag. I, I'm overlay. available. I don't know if everybody else is available. Even I just to, we have a 10 30. We have a 10 30. Okay. You okay. Go to 10 you go to you want to go to 10 30? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Be, right. uh, That'd on. be great. Let's uh, over review the. <laughs> if anyone <laughs> needs a hard copy. <laughs> <laughs> <Last meeting. laughs> is this the um okay anybody want to start yeah, yeah what, what are we looking the, at where is the nail how about if i walk you through this yeah right? yeah okay so so the right here's the map i'm not holding yes. that you guys can all see it so <laughs> the ag committee generally the everything in the side the red is our agriculture um, strategic farmland protection area. Mm -hmm. The agriculture committee heard from you guys. There was not a lot of support for taking away the private rights of somebody to develop over on site that. And the ag committee also had concerns about that because let's face it, there's quite a few farmers that um, they also are, their plan is to cash out eventually, right? So, okay. so but specifically, you see these green soils in this block right over in here. Those are prime soils in the town of Canada. Well, those are actually some of the best soils in Ontario County, the region, and truthfully the world. Actually, when you look at the list, and sometimes we get criticized for this, but when you look at the, the honey oil loam, loam soil, for instance, is one of the, the best soils. There, there's a tremendous amount of very prime soils. We have these, uh, the Paddleford Greenway up here. These are prime soils that drained in most of our larger farming operations to put the drain tiles in. But you have a lot of prime soils in this area. So generally what this does, this new version of the law says, okay, we're not going to tell you you can't develop in this strategic farmland protection overlay area. But in this area right here, where these green soils are, before the planning board is authorized to grant subdivision approval, we want the town board to weigh in that they would approve running water and sewer lines, whether or not the running of water or sewer lines is appropriate for that area. That's all this law does. Hmm. So it just kicks it to the town board so that there's an additional review. So let me just kind of walk through the sections here real quick. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Yep. That. Yep. Mm -hmm. that being said, mm -hmm. why do we need this? Is it because if we are trying to appease some people? Because the reality is what you just articulated, mm -hmm. you can only develop where there's services. And if, if the town board elects not to put services in that area, mm -hmm. you're not gonna have any development <clears throat> or the development is gonna be severely Hampering, very strange. Thank but, you. Let's think word. of it. Think of it the reverse. So right now there's nothing in existence, right? Yeah. So yeah. Mr. Developer comes along and says, "I want to develop a housing development right here." Okay. I'm going to run the water and sewer there. Doesn't even come to the planning board, the town board. It goes directly to the planning board. Planning board approves it. Off it goes, and now we have a housing development in here. That could happen. Doug? Yes, it absolutely. could happen. Yep. Yes, there's no question. Did about you it. just point to sewer district? SCR? So now, no. No. what this law, what what this ordinance would do then uh -huh. is give the yes or no authority for that developer to be able to run that sewer line mm -hmm. and water line to the town board. Correct. Yep. Where now you're saying that <clears> yes <throat> or no authorities with the planning board. 
essentially, yes. And where does the boundary define yeah, that? Correct. Yeah, correct. It's right here. So that's why I'm wondering the, where, the boundary. So let's boundary go through that wording because it's actually. Yeah, yeah, it's so the first paragraph. section is 220.33.2.1 is the intent section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it talks about it. This is only applicable to parcels that are seven acres or greater mm -hmm. that are in the strategic farmland protection overlay inside that red circle. And then it gets into the district. But right so this is my question. Are we expanding the red no, circle? Let me, let me keep no. going. Okay. So 33.2.2, Agriculture Protection Overlay District. So specifically, it spells out that it's inside that red line, inside is, the strategic farmland protection. Is yep. a reference to that particular drawing there, Doug? Yes. The it's third sentence down. Leave and, map and seven. The, third, the agriculture oh, protection the overlay shall be defined to include only those parcels of seven acres or greater in the town of Canandaigua strategic farmland protection area as mapped in the town of Canandaigua agriculture enhancement plan adopted by the town board December 2016. Yeah. Label map seven. That's what I was looking for. Yep. And include only those parcels seven acres or greater in the town of Canandaigua identified as south of County Road 30, north of Risia Road, and west of New York State Road 21, and east of the town of Canandaigua Municipal Boundary. The Ag Committee spent a lot of time looking specifically at that, and that is this area that I'm talking about. So it's south of County Road 30, north of Risia Road, east, and then west of State Road 21. They specifically, this area, which is essentially going this way towards Bloomfield, right? Because that's where these prime soils are. So. It's not saying, Mr. Developer, you want to come in with a housing development, go through a normal process. You want to come in with a housing development, go through a normal process. But in this area where all these prime soils are, we just want to have the extra step of, okay, before you run a sewer line out there, we want to make sure the town board agrees. Why did they not it's include like all the areas with in, prime yeah. soil? Because they thought that it was too broad and that you would get too much, um, you know, that, that it really would become challenging to look at every single one of those all over because it wasn't, it wasn't like, so you've got prime soils down here, for instance, right? And then you've got prime soils up here. So that becomes more challenging versus their primary concern is this area because that's where the majority of the prime soils are with the with not a lot of protection hmm. okay just yeah. what do you think of all of them with prime well, soil yeah i mean it, it's i mean you could create other restricting it to just certain people you know property in that area well so it's here's county road 30 right, right. So it's everything down here. So Rossier. Rossier Rossier is, is right city. here. Rossier is here. Yeah. And then here's 21, right? Yeah. So it's all this. It's and pretty this. significant. It's a, well, you know, you got some bordering 21 there that uh, fall out of the uh, all that area there. Right. But that was done intentionally because that's like morale. That's yeah, already, already, that was it. even yeah. before. Yeah. That's why that wasn't in the strategic yeah. farmland protection area to begin with. Why so about east of the city there? Uh, this area over here. So that's the AR1 zoning over there. That's owned by that. All that is owned by one very large uh, farming operation currently. Oh, that yeah. Springwood Dairy. We've been trying to work with them on a few years. Okay. Why are we not just doing this for any prime farmland soil over seven acres in the town? <clears throat> that's what we were just talking about. That's what it was. So, because it, it becomes so hodgepodge at that point. Well, up in that area, that is referenced. Still referring the, to this it, map, but the bulk of it is covered this, from, area. from here to here. This is yeah. the area. There's only a few parcels that are, and they got to be over seven acres, which changes a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's there's only so many. There and again, the acres. the point of this is not to take away anybody's right. The point no. of this is just to say, okay. Stand if you're going to do sense. it, let's just make sure we have all eyes on it mm -hmm. and agree. Yeah. It's that final opportunity to weigh in on whether or not it makes sense for the development of the town. It really, we're trying to find a balance. The, the Ag Committee really worked very hard to try to find a balance on, on that without taking anybody's right basically away. So um, let me ask a question. Sure. Um, I feel as though we had a great time working. I don't think it gets any better. 
Thanks, John. I agree. <laughs> I, I do. I think we got a great town for it. I think it, oh, there's only one way it's going to get better. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently there's two ways. One However, that can change and it can flip, right? I mean, it's exactly. politics and it can flip. So, what would a person that owned property that had a developer come in and with the situation you were talking about, that wanted to give them oodles of money and they were going to cash out? What would their alternative be if the town board said no? The legal alternative? Yeah, they could apply for a variance. They could apply it because this is a section of code. Okay, so then so they, they could apply, apply for a variance. variance. Mm -hmm. And then if the variance didn't go, then they could do that. What do they call it? Uh, section five or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's. Um, so there are alternatives article for article 78. 78. 78, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there are alternatives. Right. For and, people. Now, Chuck mentioned yeah. it earlier, but Chuck also. We, Chuck said something that's very important. There is another step that is required, and that is a sewer district, and that's this map up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this area that we're talking about here currently is not in yeah. sewer envisionment yeah. mapping. Mm -hmm. It's also not currently in the county sewer districts. But again, the county has the authority on that, not the town of Canandaigua. So this would give a little bit more oversight to the town of Canandaigua and Arguably, we could make an a argument to the county. No, we don't envision sewer here, and we actually even have this law in place before you extend the sewer. So the green are the sewer envisionment areas. I know I'm trying to go through this quick, guys. <laughs> um, the next section here is uh, just a section general. Uh, Verbiage here. I don't know if anybody has any question. Or no. take Why is it necessary? The right to engage in agricultural practices. Why yeah, so necessary? that's actually very important for us when we actually do our PDR programs. The the New York State Department of Agri Markets wants to see that we have something on the books relative to protection of agriculture. So we have like these signs around the town, farm friendly community, and everything. Yeah. But there's nothing currently per se in our code that says okay. yes. Okay. That we are a farm, yep. you know, detail, and then the right to engage in the ag agricultural practices that goes along with that. Okay. Um, so this final section here, new infrastructure improvements. This is the meat and the potatoes of it. Is just these two sections here, uh, thirty-three point two point five, new infrastructure. Any decision to expand public water sewer lines shall consider limiting, minimizing, or mitigation of the expansion of water sewer services to avoid those areas in the agriculture protection overlay district. Any expansion of publicly owned water or sewer lines in the town. Overlay district must be approved by the town board of the town of Canada prior to the planning board granting major subdivision approval. Shauna, you had some point. I was just wondering if this may muddy the waters, but if if there is a way to add solar in here. I think that solar needs to be its own separate, honestly, because solar, there is so much that needs to be discussed about solar. <laughs> there um, is, absolutely. And that also really needs to be its own, and then we can go back and add sections. I mean, we, you and I have talked about so many different things on solar. I know the planning board has been researching solar. Thanks I've so got much. so many different people coming at me right now with different thoughts on what we should or should not be doing with solar, right? And the Ag Committee feels like solar is the number one um, risk for farmland in the town. Absolutely. More so even the development. It absolutely is. Okay. How's everybody feel? Good. Good I still don't get why this is just restricted to that area rather than by soil type. That still does very little of it. outside of it. Outside of it, the uh, <clears throat> bigger areas is already consumed by uh, so if you own the property more than seven acres uh, and you wanted to subdivide two lots off for your family, for you know, sons, daughters, and they're putting in septic systems and wells, you would not have to go through. Yeah, so yeah. Could you find any number of lots, I guess, Correct. as long as you're not putting septic or as long as you're not putting public sewer. Right. Sewer. Public utilities, right. yeah. mm -hmm. So this allows the leeway. To be able to do that for the family lots, compounds, yep. whatever you give might my call son, it. give my son a lot. Yep. Yeah. Not to you belabor this, but John, you brought up muddying the waters. Last Wednesday, we, had, we at least at the north of the town, we had a good thunderstorm. And the next day, 
we had visible mud silt all the way to the yacht club. Yeah. And Greg brought up a point about whether boaters are polluting the lake mm -hmm. or whether farmers are going back ways. We had no farms in the watershed, we would have no blue green algae. That's all runoff silt and fertilizer from our freshly plowed friends in the farming community that are causing that. So while we're in love with farmers and protecting them, there's also the downside of promoting farming in the watershed. I think you also wouldn't have anything to eat. Either, so. I think it's a little more complicated. I, I, I don't know, but it's something when we're accommodating and encouraging farming, I'd almost rather have a housing development with their own sewer system. Come through my neighborhood the day that the true green lawn is spraying and you might have a slightly well, different we, we should have, We should have some rules about these people that are pumping the green lawn mm -hmm. crap. But Truly, farming is what's diminishing the lake water quality and not boulders. Well, you know, in that vein, we're talking with Peter here and what he wants to do, we're talking about incentive zoning and that trade off of amenities for incentives would be granted. Kevin Mulvaney had this, what was it, eight step process, eight, eight different retention areas that he wanted to install. Mm -hmm. We've done what, three, I think. One out here, one over here, there are three of them. But the whole intent was to drop that silt out, give it retention time, try and precipitate out any of the, you know, silt and anything else you can get using plants that soak up some of the contaminants. That could be something that would be negotiated with them if you ever get to that point. That some of the land he's buying over here, well, we have one over here already. We have one over there. But there are other areas where they could be installed. And and that, expense. Yeah, in every conversation with Kevin, that's the greatest yeah. benefit. And that would help the eliminate some it's, of it's that. It's amazing visually to me to right. see all oh, that. Yeah. It, it, you can see it. The soap may not be the contaminant, but it's the fertilizer mm -hmm. that they threw right. in when, when they carry the seeds. <laughs> and that's the shallowest usually, part of the lake. You can usually get one stuff quickly. You can usually look at these blooms and look at the individuals. Tom, I believe the one that you're referring to is actually the one that's coming off of Butler Road. So there's a blue line stream that works its way back and forth across mm -hmm. Butler Road that actually goes up to a farm field actually on, on Paris Street extension. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of that comes from. And we don't have a water quality improvement project specifically on that tributary. Sucker Brook is the primary it, one. That's the eight it, spots, it, right? It, it was so coming out of that Sucker Brook for sure. Yeah. 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 Just, well, sucker brook a up hell of a here. Bloom. Yeah. So okay, let's go back yeah. to this architect. Uh, Can I, agricultural. I have just a real quick. Right. Yes, please. We keep bringing up Kevin Albany. Um, it might. Don't you think maybe it's time that we give him a list of a few things that we're reviewing to try and hear from him what their priorities would be and what they would suggest on you know things like you know like this plan and it, it's. I think it's time to have Kevin come speak to the board again at some point. To, and Jared's a representative for the council. Yeah, well, he was going to speak. He was going to come um, at one of our past board meetings, but he yeah. went and got ice cream instead, which <laughs> I can understand. He, I can, he went and got ice cream. It was a, it was a little cross kickoff for the state yeah. for state. So he went and got ice cream instead, and I gave him full props for doing that. So I will. I'm. I've got to meet with him on other things. But yeah, maybe he brings there. ice cream in for everybody. We need to have any more <laughs> conversation about agricultural protection for a lake district. I don't. Are we comfortable with it? I don't see any objection. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not any opposed? Nay. Opposed. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> um, FYI, our next meeting is scheduled for August 1st. I will not be here. I'm going to be on vacation. So uh, if someone wants to take the lead with that, and my guess would be that we're going to be talking about our center zoning, or the alternative would be that we have a meeting prior to July 23rd, <laughs> and uh, we can talk about in center zoning, or I get back uh, August 15th at the 
Where are you going? Out west. We're doing a family road trip. Nice. Oh, awesome. When are you going back? August 15th. I'm going to be out there with him for the 12th. Aww. In the West. Oh, we got to talk to him. We got to talk. Yeah. Love that. One day I just showed up at Yellowstone. And uh, <laughs> what's for dinner? I'm just going to digress a little bit just to kind of, it's going to be very challenging, right? I, yeah. I, we haven't done anything like this in, since I've been hurt, mm -hmm. and we're kind of anxious to see how it goes. We could be surprised. Uh, we we feel talk. like if we don't do it now, we'll never do it with the kids, you know. Mm -hmm. and, we're You're correct. getting older so anyways that's we thing. definitely mm -hmm. have to talk I'll but you. um so that those are the alternatives that we could do it uh when do you leave the john? 18th july 23rd you leave so you're going 23rd you're going 23rd to when july 18th. to the 15th you said july 18th would be good when do you i'm sorry when do you come back uh august 15th i'd be about. august 15th Okay, so our next meeting is going to be July 8th. If there's nothing else. I'm good with the town calendar. There's, there's nothing a town, town board meeting, meeting that night. No. But. Okay. We good with that, then? So August 1st. I don't know. Now that Terry? Change it. Sure. I usually spend the entire day getting ready for the town board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carve out some time. <laughs> so we're going to meet we'll, the 18th, then? We'll help you. You want to do that at 10 or 9, really? 9. Nine. And we will talk about incentive zoning. Got it. Can okay. I ask you to have one more Thing to that please uh, i was doing analysis for the town board and i believe i've discovered a problem with the scenic view shed overlay that we unintentionally uh, may have allowed greater density in areas where uh, for instance two acre is the minimum on the base zoning um, i think we just need to insert can tweak that words. so you can give us language give for that the prior to the idea and if i could suggest or maybe to make too long a meeting but we've been kicking around TDRs for 10 years, 15 TDR. years. What's that acronym? Transfer, 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 development. transfer yeah. development rights. And it may be something that could be used in concurrent with incentive zoning. Well, no. we have a we have a hundred page document report on it. Well, I know, mm. but we never it never went anywhere. And that's another avenue to sensible. Mm -hmm. Development, uh, uh, where it benefits the developer and the town, or oh, it's just I'm throwing it out. 18th. I think the reason it didn't go anywhere because so freaking complex. I, yeah, I well, it is complex, it's, but it could be a tool well, or a toolbox good. for the town but, to benefit mutually benefit with a guy like who's. You want to time would take to resolve that through this committee? You can probably knock off four or five of these other items. Okay. The one I'm just never mind. The I, I just thought they agree with They're you, related. When you reread the draft of the incentive zoning, there's some verbiage that was added that would allow for a financial contribution to be made in exchange for the incentive zoning that also gets to the exact same thing yeah. that you're talking about. So take a look at the draft on that. I, I just emailed it out to you guys again. You'll have a Okay. It, it's not all the way there, but it's a big deal. Okay. Again, you yeah. put a lot of effort into this as well. Yeah. The TDRs and the yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Administration has it's the problem keeping track of the credits. It could be yes. I, I, in, in communities that have TDRs, that's that's the hardest thing. If you would say administrative nightmare to keep track of credits. Yeah. 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 How many how many you know, credits? Like, so it's like we had a lot of things on there. I'm sure it could be. You know, yeah. 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 Yeah.